بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد we ask Allah the Almighty to make all of our affairs and easy and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of our affairs good and may Allah protect us from every kind of sharr. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and ushrika bika wa ana a'lamu astaghfiruka lima la'lamu. Continuing on in our treaties, Nawaqid al-Islam by Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala. There's so much to say, but as we covered the first nullifier, which is shirk fi ibadatillah, and moving on to the second nullifier of Islam that Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab mentioned in his treaties, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned, Qala Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Athani, Man Ja'ala Bainahu wa Bainallahi wa Sa'it, Yad'uhum wa Yas'aluhum wa Yatawakalu alayhim, Kafra Ijma'in. So the Shaykh he said, the second nullifier of Islam is whoever seeks intercession between himself and Allah and supplicates to them and asks them and relies totally upon them has committed apostasy by consensus. Meaning that whoever seeks to put an intercessor between himself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship then they have committed apostasy, they have apostated from the religion of Islam and this is agreed upon by the scholars of jurisprudence. So this lets us know the danger of falling into this nawaqid, this nawaqid min nawaqid al-Islam that it is seeking intercession from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking to have others between oneself and their worship of their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's so many different ways that this is uh, practiced or this practice is so widespread this type of shirk outside the ummah of course but inside the ummah meaning those people who consider themselves Muslims there are so many people in the Muslim societies in the communities, no matter what Muslim country you mention, except probably Saudi Arabia. But even in Saudi Arabia, people go to Medina and they go to the Prophet ﷺ's grave and they ask him, the Shia Rafatha do it, and many other people who are misguided, they do this as well. So, before we get into the general explanation, we'll go to a, some beautiful speech that I came across from one of the Imams of the Sunnah in this time, uh, Imam bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala, in his explanation of this uh, principle. So we'll just read this uh, statement of the Shaykh of the Imam rahimahullah ta'ala uh, about this. Qala bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala, Min aqbah al itaqadad al ta'alak bil asnam wal ahjar wal ashjar wal ahjar wal quburi wal qawaqibi wa ghayri dhalika wa da'watuha min duni Allah wa istighatha biha wa nadhar laha wa nahu dhalika mimma kana yaqa'a fi jahiliya so the shaykh the imam said that one of the worst types uh, of belief in creed is the uh, the creed of those people whose hearts are who, who, who believe that the belief in uh, asnam you know in like statues and idols and trees and rocks and graves and stars and other things of this that they supplicate to them other than Allah they fear them and have hope that they will receive reward from them and blessings and uh, and so forth 
and that they sacrifice to them, meaning sacrificing to the graves, the stars, the uh, and statues and idols and so forth. And these are the things, these practices were widespread during Jahiliya, meaning the time of the Prophet wasallam, and the advent before Islam, before the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. these were widespread practices that the police, the people believed in uh, uh, idols as there was more than 360 uh, idols in the Kaaba alone in Mecca. And so these were widespread practices that the people committed this type of shirk from Jahiliya. Then the Shaykh said, وَكَانَ اِتِقَادِهِمْ أَنَّ الْإِيمَانَهُمْ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ رَبُّهُمْ يَكْفِي وَأَنَّهُ لَا يَعْبُدُ إِلَّا بِوَاسِطَ So they used to, their, their belief was this, that they had faith that Allah, so they had Iman, they had a degree of Iman. They had Iman that Allah was their Lord and that that was sufficient. Meaning they believed in Rububiyyah. They believed in the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was the creator, he is the sustainer, he's the provider, he is the planner and so forth. And that's what, where they stopped. And that's similar to in our day, in, 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 in our uh, time that we live in, that there are many people who believe in Rububiyyah from the Muslims and from the non-Muslim communities. For example, if you were to ask a Christian or a Jew or perhaps even a Hindu, you know, who created everything? They would say God. So they would say Allah. So they believe in the Lordship of Allah. They believe that God is the creator of the heavens and earth and the sustainer. And this is the same as the people of Jahiliyyah, they believe this. And this is the same practice that we have many people who uh, bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship and that Muhammad is the last prophet and messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they make the shahadatain. They also have this uh, same belief. They believe in the lordship of Allah. And however, this is where Ahl Jahiliyyah and during, the, and during the time of Muhammad ibn the Wahhab as well, and even up until our time, where the people went astray. They believed that Allah could only be worshipped with an intercessor, with someone between them and between Allah. And we'll get to the reasons why, as the Shaykh explains. ما تجعلهم ليس أهل لأن يباشروا عبادة الله بل لابد لابد من واسطة. So their reasoning, here's their logic. The Sheikh went on to say that their logic was that they had very wicked deeds. You know that they're wicked sinners, as we all know. The Prophet ﷺ said, "كل ابن آدم خطأ وخير الخطائين توابون." That all the children of Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, are sinners. But the best of those people who sin are those who repent. So all of us have sins. So the people held, and some people hold this belief that they're too sinful, and that they have, you know, unpraiseworthy characteristics. That make them make it uh, make them not worthy of praying and worshiping Allah directly, but rather it is necessary for an for an intercessor. Subhanallah, it's shameful that we see this in the Muslim communities because this is the practice of those people who came before us, as we know, which is widespread practice. Uh, I've been. I, when I was young, I went to a, a Catholic school and the practice was and still is that in Catholicism, if you, you, you've done wicked sins, you go to the, preach, uh, the, the priest and you confess, oh father, I've sinned. You know, so you're using him as what? As an intercessor because you believe that he is pure and he has a stronger relationship with Allah so that you go and confess your sins to him to get forgiveness. That he's going to forgive you and that he's going to transmit your forgiveness or your asking and your repentance to Allah for you. This is a completely alien concept to Islam. Although many of the people fall into this uh, in the Muslim societies, that they go, they go to the graves of the dead 
they supplicate to them to the dead saints their dead ancestors uh, as I said in Medina they go to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's grave they raise their hands up and they pray to him instead of giving him salams which is mashru or which is legislated and 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 salams to uh, uh, to his companions radiallahu ta'ala anhuma and and so forth but we are not ordered nor do we have any evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu to supplicate to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and seek his intercession while he is after his death. But this is something and during our lifetime. This will be in the hereafter, the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, but not in this lifetime. So we do not ask the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't go to his grave and raise our hands and say, Ya Rasulullah, please make my wife have a baby. Ya Rasulullah, please bless me with uh, better employment or increase my risk. Wa billah min dhalika. That shirk, that is uh, that which takes a person out of the fold of Islam. It is the major shirk because you've directly directed ibadah, your worship, to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And worship, all worship goes to Allah. Every Muslim will agree upon that principle. But the practice of that is something else because they define many Muslims, especially many of the Sufi sects, they don't define worship or uh, um, supplication as a type of worship necessarily. They say, hey, no, this is this is something, it's okay, and it's not worship. So when I supplicate to my imam that's in a whole nother country, and I ask him, and I cry when I see his picture, and I seek uh, refuge in him, this is not worship. Or, or to go to the graves and ask from the dead, it is not actually supplicating to the dead, but actually it is to the essence of the human being. And this is direct speech, I've studied this, and spent time researching this, so this is a, a direct quote from one of the uh, a, a, a Sufi Sheikh in uh, the UAE, that this is a directly speech of his of what he described about making to whistle to the dead. He said it's not worship and it's not that we are uh, supplicating to the dead, but it's the essence that human beings all have, whether they're dead or living. So it's not worship. However, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, a dua. Ibadah. That supplication is worship. And that's that's enough for us right there. Supplication is ibadah. To know that anytime you raise your hand, anytime you supplicate, that is a type of worship. And we know that all worship goes to who? To Allah. And worship Allah and do not associate any partners with Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala then went on to say, Kama yatawasat al wazara wal umara. الجهل وتقليد الأباء والأجداد. Beautiful, beautiful statement from this Alam Rabbani, rahimahullah taala. So he said, rahimahullah taala, when after talking about the that the people they seek uh, intercession between them and Allah subhanahu wa taala, he said similar to the way they do this, similar to the way that people go to the ministers in government and to the princes for different affairs that uh, there are different affairs that happen between them or going to the king or going to the presidents all of these uh, these this is how these people uh, they operate similar to the way human beings operate with their leaders and going that you don't go directly to for example the president if you have a uh, in our country in America if you have a uh, disagreements with the president of the United States then you of course what do you do maybe you write him a letter if it gets to him uh, you write it you write your congressman in your state uh, and, or your governor of your state or whatever in order to intercede on your behalf in your 
your affair or uh, what have you. You express your grievances that way. But you don't just call the president or go to the White House. Not anyone can just go to the White House and say, you know, Mr. Obama, I, I disagree with your policy here or I disagree with your health care program here. That absolutely not. And so these people, when they seek to make intercession between themselves and Allah in worship, it is similar to the way some of the people uh, that people make intercession with, for example, their leadership. And then the Sheikh said, so in this way that they have combined between tashbih, meaning that they have made a resemblance between the creator of the heavens and earth who doesn't resemble anything or anyone and nor does anyone or anything resemble him as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says basir. there is nothing like him and he is the all hearing all seeing so they've made a resemblance between them uh, to the, the creation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and was shirk billah azza wa jal and on top of that they've committed shirk polytheism with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they've associated partners with him by supplicating to those people of the graves or whoever he said all of that is from their lack of knowledge and their immersion in ignorance their in immense ignorance and it is also from their blind following their fathers and their uh, ajdad their uh, the people who came before them, their salaf or their their forefathers. All of this is from uh, from that bab. So that was a great benefit. And the Sheikh has so much speech. We're going to have to bring this some of this other speech at another time. But we'll get back to the main qaeda, which and all of this is relevant. So as we said that. Uh, this nullifier faith is actually a specific example of shirk. So when we look at this, this principle, the second nullifier uh, of uh, from the Nawakid al-Islam, it's actually a part of the first Nawakid. Okay, so this is uh, uh, there's a principle they say uh, 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 that the Wurud al al akhas bad al am or something like this, you, which means that it's when you mention something specific after the general principle, but that specific thing, specific example falls into that general principle. And this is the case with uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab mentioning the second nullifier of Islam. Because the second nullifier of faith is actually a specific type of shirk. So it's a specific example, which is the first nullifier, which is shirk. However, the Sheikh mentioned it because it was uh, very common during his lifetime and that it's a very serious form of shirk. So it was very wide spread during the time of Muhammad ibn al Wahhab in the uh, Arab Peninsula. And as we know, unfortunately, it's still fairly widespread in many places all over the Muslim world and, and the non-Muslim world, in fact. So what is meant by intercession here is taking an intercessor between a person and Allah by supplicating or seeking to come closer to Allah through another person or having strict reliance and belief in someone that they cannot fail and placing complete trust and faith in them. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah divided intercession into two categories. He said the prohibited and the permissible. And I think we'll stop there for now and we'll pick it up in the next lesson. We'll finish this naqid min nawaq al-Islam in order to keep it brief. And we ask Allah the Almighty to protect us from kulli su wa makru. And may Allah bless the Muslims everywhere to be to raddin jameelin ila ittiqad sahih May Allah bless us all to come back to the correct aqidah and correct belief. And, and, belief. and, and may Allah preserve his, his, his earth and his creation from shirk and polytheism and bless all of humanity with guidance to kitab Allah wa sunnah Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam